Okay, well, Margaret, it's really great to meet you and to hear a little bit about your work as a marine biologist, but I'm wondering, how did you get into all of this in the first place? It is a good question. I actually grew up in, in the center of the US, very far away from the ocean. Mm -hmm. But I was fortunate. Um, my family traveled a lot, and I was exposed to tropical marine environments when I was fairly young and fell in love with coral reefs mm -hmm. um, that I was able to observe at a young age. I actually began scuba diving sort of as as early, as young as they would let me. I believe I was 12 <laughs> when I began scuba diving. Um, with my father, but I just the, the beauty of those systems was enrapturing to me even as a child. My family was also, um, you know, we only got to see coral reefs maybe once every few years on holiday, but um, we spent a lot of time outdoors enjoying nature uh, closer to home. I think I first went backpacking when I was about six weeks old uh, on my mother's <laughs> back. So w we had a, a strong affinity for the natural mm. world, but um, I really fell in love with coral reefs. And when I started applying to graduate school and saying, I want to study coral reef ecology, the common response is sort of, of course you do. Everybody wants to do that. <laughs> what are you really going to do for your research topic? Um, so I'm very blessed to have been able to mm. follow that path and actually um, enjoy a research career of focusing on that beautiful system. I, I mean, I guess, when you first wanted to do your research, perhaps there wasn't quite so much interest in coral reefs. I mean, I guess now that people are really taking on board that they're really both precious and endangered ecosystem. I think that's it true. I think that's true. There is much more common knowledge and, and mm. popular knowledge, I think, of coral reef systems these days. I, I was, uh, you know, I'm old enough that Jacques Cousteau was still sort of oh, the, yeah. the quintessential yeah. <laughs> uh, icon in, yeah. in marine exploration and marine science. I grew up watching Jacques Cousteau specials. So I remember those too. <laughs> they were influential on quite a generation or two. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's true as we recognize better both the value of coral reef systems and you know, the desperate plight that they're facing mm. um, with the changes in the environment that are going on. There, there has been a lot of effort, and I think a lot of that effort has been successful in raising, raising their profile, so to speak. Mm. The challenge is always getting people to do something about it. You know, just don't you find it's that? It's such a different thing to ask people to understand and appreciate versus asking people to change the way that they live. Mm. And I think... This is, uh, this is so much of the challenge. I mean, it certainly applies to me as well. I understand, you know, the implications of me, you know, driving a car and flying on airplanes mm. and using energy and using plastic bags and things like that. Mm. It's very difficult to change the way mm. that we live, even when we care about things and even when we understand that there are bad consequences to many of the ways that we live. It's, it's very challenging. I, it's, I guess it's our sinful nature. Um, you know, comfort is something that is mm -hmm. very difficult for us to give up, mm -hmm. um, even when the consequences of that comfort are dire in some regards, mm -hmm. at least cumulatively. I, I always think too, I don't know if you agree with this, that actually for a lot of people, they kind of know there's a big problem. They know that something needs to be done about it, but they actually feel that their little isn't going to make Absolutely. enough difference. And I, I wrestle with that quite a lot in the, the sort of speaking I do on this subject in Christian contexts, I suppose for me the the way that I look at it is similarly to when you think about all the people who don't have clean water or who don't have enough food to eat. You can't Absolutely. help all of them, but you give a little bit to an aid agency yeah. or you put your money somewhere and it helps, it helps a little bit. And I feel that we have to, I mean, I think we have to tackle these problems governmentally, internationally. All levels. But actually, we have to also say your little bit of change makes crucial. a difference. Yeah. And it's very, it, I agree, it's extremely difficult to sort of message that, I mm. think, in terms of, especially when I'm talking about corals and coral reefs, the news is so bad. <laughs> um, you know, there's mm. a tendency to yeah. say also, we can't, it's, it's too late, we mm. can't save them, so why... Why would even my little increment of, of sacrifice um, 
it, it can't yeah. make enough difference because the news is so bad and the doom and gloom are so extreme. Mm -hmm. So I think it's extremely challenging that way because there is a tendency to hopelessness mm -hmm. in, those, in those situations where oh, it seems very bad. I mean, it, it, it's, it's difficult one. I was at a conference a few years ago organized by a number of Christians who were also concerned about environmental issues and they, they called the conference because they were aware that a lot of Christians who were involved in mm. speaking about this were losing hope yeah. and it was a call a to re, mm. regain a sense of hope. I think we did at the end of the conference, we came out with a stronger theology and a stronger sense that actually it really mattered we have a message as Christians that does have a hope. Hope, hope and, is a key, uh, I agree. And without that, I think you might not get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> I completely agree. I find exactly the same thing. I think um, the Christian faith has a basis for hope, mm. um, for the redemption of all creation, mm. as well as for the redemption of humans. And that certainly enables me, as you said, to get out of bed in the morning, mm. um, to go and visit the corals that I, you know, study over time and often get sick and die. And I watch them do that mm. helplessly for the most part. Mm. I, I totally agree. I think that hope that is presented by understanding that God cares about creation and, mm. and does have a plan for redemption. We're called to play a role in that. Mm. that that's, I guess, mm. the challenge, I think, maintaining our responsibility. Yes, because at the some... same time as acknowledging that God's responsibility's yeah. intent is to redeem all of creation as well. I think I, I have a little bit of, of tension there. How do we maintain both our mm. own responsibility and need to care and tend I think I think way. it's a healthy tension isn't it mm. because it because it's actually acknowledging God's yes. power and God's control as it were and also acknowledging our, our own, own responsibility and it's it's good to always be thinking about which bit is my what right. do I take on board right. and what do I have to let go of what can I change? I suspect that probably maybe Christians fall into two opposite camps. There are those perhaps who are really very aware of mm. environmental issues, okay. perhaps like you and I, that perhaps worry more than we should. Probably, <laughs> that's probably true. And then there are a whole swathe, perhaps the majority, all, that right? don't have yeah. enough sense of, actually, I should be responsible for this and take quite, my responsibility seriously. And that's so, quite true, yes. Yeah. And I guess that certainly, as I said, in, in my research and my work where I deal so much with these somewhat hopeful situations, mm. I guess it does. My perspective and, and, and my intent in pursuing those perhaps hopeless mm. <laughs> approaches, but that um, the degree of my work that can contribute to understanding and caring and tending or restoring function in coral reef ecosystems is my part, is, mm. is part of my vocation, recognizing that probably what I do is not going to solve the problem, right? It, it isn't mm -hmm. going to be enough. It's a piece. Mm -hmm. And God has a role as well that I have to depend on strongly. Mm -hmm. I think that would be the same for me as someone who goes and speaks to Christian groups and secular groups about environment yeah. and faith. You know, every group I go to, I don't know who's going to listen and take on board what I'm saying. Yeah. And I just have to go and hope that something of what I'm trying to communicate yeah. will get through, that some people will change their behavior in a little way or a big way. And hope that, you have to hope that it's like dropping a, a stone in a pond. Or, yeah, yeah right. dropping a stone in a pond and watching the ripples mm -hmm. go out further. Or as you say, yes, throwing seeds mm -hmm. and hoping that, that something will, will germinate. But in the end, it is about being faithful to what you feel that God has put in your heart. And Sometimes I sort of think it would, it would be nice if, if, if I'd been called to be a biologist or an ecologist and was out there getting my hands dirty and my feet wet and so on. But I that just... That could uh, be true. There is at least some um, active uh, component mm. of that, perhaps, that it that does give one um, some direct participation or feeling a little bit of direct participation. I, I sublime... I am thankful for that. Yeah. <laughs> 
I deal with that by digging my allotment and growing vegetables <laughs> instead. Which is excellent. So. <laughs> which is excellent too. Which is I'm a terrible great. gardener. So. <laughs> oh, it's my life is uh, growing vegetables. That's great. So. That is an important contribution Organically too. and giving food to the birds and the deer bread. and <laughs> some that come and eat them all. The <laughs> yeah, we have a few. A few so. leftovers for the people. Uh, yeah, That's yeah, wonderful. Yeah.